I've traveled the world tracking down river monsters in some of the most dangerous waters imaginable. But my journey to catch a deadly electric eel ends at a mud hole in the middle of cattle pasture. It's the last place on earth I'd expect to find an elusive, lethal fish. I'm just making a bit of a trench from my point of view. It'll be easier to handle if there's some kind of sort of notch that it's in rather than it's being able to slip and slide all over the place. My normal capture method would be useless in water this shallow. So out goes the rod and in comes a lasso, fitting for cowboy country. Because electric eels don't rely on physical strength, pulling it out of the water shouldn't be that hard. But not getting shocked will be, so protective clothing is essential. We've got a plan. The plan is not so much to, to sort of go after the head with the noose, but to position that and then get it to go through the noose. Just taking a few deep breaths because one slip and, you know, it could be very nasty indeed, need to be so focused and so careful about this. An eel this size can deliver a shock of 650 volts. That's enough to stop my heart in seconds. First go, amazing, first go. Electric eels can keep on shocking out of water, but the rubber gloves we're wearing protect us from this. Oh, look at the colours on this thing. These are wonderful. I've got to give it a clean. That is like, it's doing a sort of, it looks like a muscle contraction. Spasm, almost. That's when it's actually shocking. Because electric eels get most of their oxygen from breathing air, they can stay out of water for long periods of time. That's five foot ten and a half. That's pretty much exactly the same as, as me. This is exactly the same size as the eel that killed Francisco, the 21-year-old man who died in a tiny pond near Villanova. If I wasn't wearing these rubber gloves, I could be dead too. It's over 100 degrees, and I don't want the fish to overheat, so time it went back in the water. The pond may be shallow at the moment, but the rains are not far behind me. The waters will soon rise, giving this eel the freedom to roam once again. My search led me to this tiny drying out puddle. I mean, the water in there is barely six inches deep. It's the last place you'd expect to find a river monster, but that's where it was. Hello, I'm I'm the water. There's more, there's more, there's more. It's not just this big one. There's, again, it looks like wood, but it just started moving. We were, we were watching it and it looks like there's actually several, but smaller, right in with these roots here. I've just never seen anything like this before. It's like a tangle of bodies. I'm just trying to count the heads. The more I look, the more I see. I was thinking 10 or a dozen. I think there could be 20 down here. This is an incredible discovery and answers the final question about how the cowboys died. I believe a group of electric eels like this was trapped in a pool over the dry season. When the rains came, the water levels got higher until the eels could all leave into the swelling waterways. It was in these waterways where the trio of unlucky cowboys came across them. After their startled horses threw them into the water. Each one of these eels could deliver a fatal shock. So a group of 20 would easily be capable of killing the cowboys. 